This video will show you how to interactively tune your current loop gains. This is for PMAC commutated motors only, for example for a DC brushless motor or an AC induction motor with a direct PWM amplifier or a sinusoidal commutation amplifier. This video assumes that you have already enabled the motor and commutation and have properly mapped your axis interfaces input and output channels. If you haven't done this yet, you should go through the motor setup process first and return here when it is time to fine-tune your current loop. To access the interactive current loop tuning software from within the Power PMAC IDE, first click Tools and then Tune. Select your motor, in my case it's motor 3, and then click on Current Loop Tuning and Interactive Tune. The interactive current loop tuning screen is divided into three different sections the current loop step parameter setup section is where you can specify the magnitude of the step command in bits this is how much current you'll be sending to one of the motors phases in units of digital bits we'll learn how to convert these to actual amps later on the rough phasing magnitude parameter specifies the amount of current to use when PMAC phases the rotor or forces it into one of its phases before commanding the current step. The dwell time parameter specifies how long in milliseconds to command the current step. Next is the phase current bias offsets section. Here you can specify the offsets in phases A and B of your motor in motor x.ia bias and motor x.ib bias respectively. To learn how to determine these offsets, please refer to the ADC calibration video tutorial. You can convert bits to amps if you know the max ADC quantity in amps for your amplifier. This is the amperage the amplifier outputs when it receives the largest possible command from PMAC. That is when PMAC commands a digital value of 32767 out from its current loop. The max ADC quantity is specified for each drive in its manual or data sheet and can vary between drives. For example, the smallest capacity GeoDirect PWM drive will produce an output of 8 amps when it receives a full 32,767 value from PMAX current loop. If you are using a DC brushless motor and you have zero magnetization current, use this equation to calculate the actual current you're commanding. The current output in amps will be equal to the max ADC value of the amplifier divided by 32,767 multiplied by the square root of 2 over 3 multiplied by the current command in bits that you selected under the magnitude field in the interactive current loop tuning window. For example, if my max ADC is 8 amps and I am commanding a current step of 3,000 bits, the resulting command current output equals 8 divided by 32767 multiplied by the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 3 multiplied by 3000 equaling 0 0.598 amps. If instead you are using an AC induction motor or a stepper motor, you will have some magnetization current in the rotor. And you can use this formula instead. Current output in amps equals max ADC in amps divided by 32767 multiplied by the square root of two-thirds multiplied by the square root of the current command that you select in the interactive current loop tuning window squared plus motor x dot idcmd squared. The commanded magnetization current motor x dot idcmd needs to be properly configured in order to run AC induction motors or stepper motors that use direct microstepping. Now be careful not to command amperage greater than your motor or amplifier can handle. Note that the parameter motor x dot max dac will limit the commands that PMAC sends to the amplifier, and motor x dot pwm sf will scale the output of the current loop. The button marked do a current loop step will initiate the step command. The kill motor button will cut all power from the motor. The current loop feedback gains section is where you actually choose the gains used for the current loop. 
The first gains that you will usually tune are the feedback proportional gain, motor x dot ipb gain, and the integral gain, motor x dot ii gain. You can see that by hovering over the name, it displays the structure used. Tune these until the step response overshoots and oscillates about the commanded step magnitude. You can start by increasing the integral gain until you overshoot and oscillate about the target current value, and then add feedback proportional gain to damp the response until the natural frequency, rise time, and percent overshoot are satisfactory for your specifications. The integral gain is directly proportional to the natural frequency of the closed loop system. By increasing the integral gain, you can increase the natural frequency up to the system's limitation. The feedback proportional gain is directly proportional to the damping of the closed loop system. By increasing the feedback proportional gain, and technically also the forward path proportional gain, which we will discuss later, you can increase the damping up to the system's limitations. Generally speaking, a theoretically optimal trajectory tracking for a second order system such as this closed loop system, occurs when the damping ratio is 0.707. You can monitor the damping ratio on the step response plot. I'll do an example step response right now to show you. You can see right here we compute the damping ratio right here, 0.701. You can also monitor the natural frequency of your response right here in Hertz. Natural frequencies in the range of 200 to 500 Hertz are generally good enough for most applications. Tuning the current loop too tightly, that is if the natural frequency is greater than about 800 Hertz, could have deteriorating effects on the position loop tuning. So be aware of both of these quantities as you tune. Another gain is available called motor X dot IPF gain. This is the forward path proportional gain that I mentioned earlier. This acts directly on the difference between commanded and actual current without integration. Therefore, it is better for disturbance rejection. Motor X dot IPB gain, the back path proportional gain, or the feedback proportional gain, on the other hand, acts on an integrated value, so it is better for trajectory tracking. If you want to keep your damping constant and also keep the poles of the closed loop system in the same place, you can keep the sum motor x dot IPF gain plus motor x dot IPB gain constant and transfer as much from IPB gain into IPF gain as desired to increase your disturbance rejection.